thank you so much for uh, uh, this interview for dancetech.net. You're welcome, Marlon. Well, um, Ohio State came out of um, actually a situation that began for me in Frankfurt, but I guess it's pretty ubiquitous, which is that dance is at the bottom of the food chain, so to speak. Uh, maybe we're a little bit ahead of poets. You know? <laughs> but um, when uh, I had a problem in Frankfurt with funding, uh, at first, you know, one goes through the usual grumblings and uh, points the usual fingers in the usual places. So um, I realized that the problem was bigger. It was uh, more a, a wider cultural problem than anything against, you know, me personally or the company. Mm -hmm. It was the fact that dance is not reified. In other words, it has n it's not materialized in any way that affords uh, a, a kind of uh, a reading a sustained reading like you have in the sciences and the visual arts. Mm -hmm. In other words, um, science naturally has all their documents and the arts have their objects, they have their sculptures and paintings and the opera has their librettos and, and uh, scores, the, the plays, yeah. uh, and the, uh, the plays all have their libretti and so on and so forth and we don't have anything that people could read and examine uh, at their leisure, let's say or uh, there's no way people could study what we do. And there was no way to publish ideas. Um, so I realized it was kind of ridiculous to blame people for not, under some, uh, un for not understanding something uh, that was not explained, which is how dancing works. So I thought, well, I guess I have to uh, amend that problem. Because you can't blame people for not knowing if there's nothing to know. Uh -huh. uh, it's fine. You, people can acquire expertise. Uh, like Critics like choreographers mm -hmm. uh, are all autodidacts. They, they acquire their skill through experience. And I realize that audiences are much the same way. Uh, uh -huh. But um, is there anyone who can claim, other than, than actual makers, expert readership? Yeah. Yeah. In other words, of the mechanic, you can say, oh, this belongs to that, you know, this came after that, and this is related to that, and this looks like so-and-so's work, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, but these comparative things are yeah. not really helpful um, in the long term, when in fact, makers of dances are looking at, at how things are made, they're looking at the emergence of motion, and trying to understand what the decisions are that are being made in order to engender that kind of state, and each choreographer has their different... Um, goals and, and interests. So I thought if we could make an initiative and start publishing our ideas, as crazy as it sounds in dance, mm -hmm. um, maybe we could acquire a readership to provide, um, you know, the world at large with uh, <laughs> something to read uh, uh, directly about dance. So with this new digital media, you can now um, publish the dance mm -hmm. and the idea at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're synchronized. In other words, if you write after a dance, no one can really say, well, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't demonstrate a movement. You can't demonstrate a complex organization. But now you can. Yeah. You know? And so I am thinking of it, the synchronous objects, as a way to um, bring people in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, I was thinking, well, I've learned a lot from other disciplines. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a way to lead dancers or dance engaged people out to other fields. Uh, the work of Alvin Noah has been extremely interesting. Uh, he describes this project as a tool, and his relationship with the project is about making models and making mm -hmm. tools. And I think it's a very interesting way to think. It's been very interesting to try to distill an idea like counterpoint, a visual mm -hmm. counterpoint working with uh, computer scientists who are thinking in, in terms of calculus and not, you know, uh, tondus and degas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, trying to say, okay, what is it actually? What yeah. is this phenomena? You see so much, uh, so much of life imitated in these digital films, you know, mm -hmm. Shrek and so on. Everyone's hair is moving yeah. very realistically and the leaves are blowing. And I'm thinking, well, surely we could develop something that imitates some things we know in a very basic way. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to not try to, you know, say this is the way all dance works. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, here's one little thing I've been thinking about, which yeah. is visual counterpoint, which I see in 
uh, Balanchine and Petipah, yeah. you see it in Trisha Brown, yeah. you see it in Anna Teresa de Case, Margaret Jonathan yeah. Burroughs, blah, blah, blah. Or in John crowds. Jasper's, in crowds, <laughs> in, in flocks, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, could we create an environment where you could learn about it very quickly? Yeah. And the idea for me coming from ballet was that the classical has migrated. In other words, it's not ex exclusively located in the domain of the historical, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, the 19th century repertoire, but actually the same principles are now looking differently. Mm -hmm. They're in another state, and this is how they look. I think of choreography as a, an organizational practice. Mm -hmm. Boston. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's choreography, and some choreography uh, use a lot of choreography rather has used dance mm -hmm. as its medium, but choreography is not necessarily bound to dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nor is dance bound to choreography yeah. for that matter. Yeah. yeah, you can just get up and dance, and uh, I guess you would probably enter a choreographic state if you're conscious of what you're doing or mm -hmm. not. Yeah, or a pattern. A state. Patterns, exactly. Yeah. So um, this this fundamental state of organization is interesting for me. Yeah. And the fact that we all share this, choreographers are trying to set things into motion, there's usually chains of action instigated, and um, it just doesn't have to be what is traditionally known as dance. You can set crowds of people into action mm -hmm. inadvertently without them knowing. I've done a lot of that in installations. Uh, so my, I guess my biggest investigation is into what could possibly be choreography. Mm. You know, what do, what could the word mean? That's why I would like with um, Synchronous Objects, which is part of Motion Bank, to eventually be able to publish as many choreographers as possible as I was able to publish. So I'm trying to raise money right now so we can accomplish this because there's so many ways to think about choreography, mm. Lord knows. Yeah. And rather than have the work mediated by other um, experts, um, often critics have that job, um, to hear from the choreographers themselves what they were actually working on, mm. what they were thinking about. Mm. Now it's fine if, um, for example, table dance, if Anna Kisilov, uh, uh writes in a very well-meaning sense, it's, it's, a, it's like a riot in a cafeteria, which it is, I guess, at some point, <laughs> but it's not. Yep. It's a, an incredibly, um, complicated piece of craftsmanship <laughs> so and that doesn't ever get out to the public yeah yeah that we're, we're mediated and I understand you have to encapsulate it as in a metaphor yeah. as a critic but I think that perhaps uh, our, our readership yeah. would like to read a little further yeah. and so that the ideas can be discussed and yeah. I think this is what we need and like I say this idea of creating uh, a library mm -hmm. would be really interesting and I'm, I have tremendous liberty to, to work on ideas. Uh, of course, I have my uh, quotas and whatever I have to do to keep the shop running. <laughs> but uh, I do have tremendous uh, liberty to think. Yeah. And I hope that if we begin to publish ideas, all of us, yeah. that we would all acquire a little more freedom to think. I ended up with one kind of complexity, for example, in table dance on synchronous objects because I used a particular method, which is a lot like word processing. Yeah. You know? So um, uh, I assume that with the advent of all these media, that people will find ways if they want to work with complexity. You know, um, but I don't think that should be everyone's goal for any. Uh, yeah. yeah. By any means, I think that that just happens to be one case. Complexity in itself it should not be a goal. You know, yeah. It just comes out of the subject. When the, where the hell the next idea will come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I said, uh, my wife said, well, why are you so worried one day? And I said, well, I have to make a piece by William Forsyth in three weeks. <laughs>